So in this video series I will show you guys how to get started with Steam Audio on Unreal Engine 4.19.2 in your project. Um, before we start off I'll show you where to find the official documentation released by Steam and additional community support. So if we just google Steam Audio documentation it should throw you out this link Well, software github.io so if we just open that up this is the stuff that we want, Unreal Engine plugin, user manual. So this is the official documentation released by the company and basically explains everything in written form of what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to be presenting to you guys here. I will also show you a couple of tricks of the trade, how to get the sound working smoother and what I've concluded from playing around with the plugin. Um, so as for the community, uh, if we go up here to the top right, click support, then we have this forum over here which is uh, where you can basically post questions and it's also moderated by the Valve developers so they, uh, so th hopefully they, they keep a close eye of what's going on here. Okay, so um, if we open up the Unreal, so this is the environment that I've built and I'll start off with a small demonstration of what my environment sounds without Steam Audio and then I'll turn on Steam Audio on and show you guys what settings I have for the plugin and the environments. Um, in the next video I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide how I got there. So We can hear that there's no occlusion settings going on. There's no accounting for any physical real-life properties of the environment or listening. There's no elevation. There's no front to back modeling. It's just a plain sound. So this is without Steam Audio. So now let's turn on Steam Audio on. Um, so that click that and we've got already made attenuation settings over here let's do for the rest of the sources as well so as for the plugin um, for the source modeling I've got HRTF which is what we want so that's the 3d audio processing for interpolation method I've got bilinear, bilinear which chews up a little bit more processing power but gives you a bit more smoother result. Um, in the next video we'll show you guys like what all these settings mean but for now this is what I've got. So for reverb I've got baked reverb which is pre-modeled and for occlusion I've got direct occlusion with frequency dependent transmission. Um, the method is uh, partial uh, and physics based attenuation air absorption as well. So let's see how it sounds now. Um, please listen out for the how the reverb changes depending on the which environment I am in, and also listen out to the fluttering of the sound, which is normally caused by in real life um, in real life by two parallel surfaces which are reflect reflecting the sound front front and back backwards and forwards. And pay attention also to how well we can locate the sound in the 3D space due to the HRTF modeling. So not only left and right but also up and down and front to back modeling. So as I'm approaching the house you can kind of hear the sound like going through the walls a little bit. Nothing in here. But sounds, qui sounds quite dry. Kind of like what you expect from a room this size. over here I've got some far as well so this is going to be like um, an HRTF demonstration if you like without any reverb or occlusion just kind of like a plain um, plain sound which you can kind of position in 3D audio in 3D space so 
here's front up and down elevation. And uh, back to front. So now let's move on to the church. So what we would be expecting from an environment like this, because it's like made out of brick and because it's big, it will be quite reflective, so we're expecting a big reverberation tail as well. So in this environment you can hear the fluttering of the sound. So basically caused by these two parallel surfaces reflecting the sound back and front because you can kind of hear the tail just kind of just fluttering out. So steam audio basically generates an impulse response depending on the size of the building so it accounts for geometry. Um, and it also accounts for the materials, so if different materials have different ab absorption coefficients then the sound is going to be more drier because it's going to be absorbed more quicker. So in the church the physical material is set to brick, which as we just heard is quite reverberant and that's kind of like what we would expect from a building this size. Um, and in this one, so even though it's actually made out of wood, just to prove a point, um, I set the material to carpet, so which would be more absorbent than wood actually. So, but in terms of the sound itself, um, I think it's quite an accurate representation of a fully carpeted room. So basically, what you can do with steam audio, what what great, what, what kind of like usages can you have it? Um, definitely virtual reality, because if we have convincing graphics, um, we need some audio to accompany it as well. And this is kind of like what Steam Audio is trying to do. Um, finally, starting to model some ge incorporating geometry in the uh, in the level, and kind of replicating the uh, real life phenomena that we see in everyday life. And also for architectural modeling as well. Um, it could be that like further down in the future we might see architects using, I suppose, AutoCAD, but maybe Unreal Engine or some other game development software, just because you can also model the spaces with sound because let's say if we're if we're designing a a rock rock venue like a music venue or a or like a school and we're concerned about the acoustics of it then in this software using this plugin we can we can also hear how the spaces would sound like um one thing that the uh software doesn't model is um a directivity so it treats all sources at, as point sources which basically means that the sound radiates um, from a source in equal direction. Because let's say if we have a character over here who's uh, facing that way, and if he's speaking, then we would want the sound to kind of like emit from his mouth in a cone like that. So obviously, though, if we would stand behind the character, there will be more filtration behind him and the sound be more clearer in front of him. So this is one of the flaws in Steam Audio. This is where they could like further develop their software. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. And in the next video, I'll show you how we actually got here.